Hello, insiders. We have a special guest today. I'm with Luke from the YouTube Analytics Engineering Team. Welcome to the show, Luke. Thank you, Tom. All right. Now, you have been working on YouTube Analytics for how long now? Uh, analytics since uh, 2018, so about two years now. Oh, right on. What were some of the things that you worked on that creators may have used uh, in the past? Um, I've been working on a lot of audience focused data sets. Yeah. So this whole, like, uh, knowing your audience better is something that YouTube analytics always had like the basic demographics, like, you know, male, female age, geography, but I think what you're working on and the area that you're looking at is to really increase the level of insight and understanding of the audience far beyond the, the basic demographics. Right. Like it's interesting to know the demographics and the age range of your audience, but mm -hmm. oftentimes that's not directly actionable. So I'm looking to find ways to give creators the ability to diagnose and uh, act on growing their channel. So knowing who's watching their videos and uh, how they might appeal to them better. And you have been working on a specific concept uh, that's now in kind of early stages of, of product development. Yeah, so I've been working on helping creators know when their audience is online, so specifically what hours within the week. And so I can go ahead and uh, present when your viewers are on YouTube. This is for this lovely Creator Insider channel. Yeah. And uh, we see the darker boxes here are where it's more heavily populated and it gets lighter when it's not. Um, uh -huh. Creator Insider has a fairly global audience overall, as we can see at the bottom here with the United States and India being the top countries, but neither being a dominant factor. So it doesn't actually go down a ton throughout the week. For the most part, the audience is consistently most on YouTube in Europe time between 4 p.m. and 7 or 8 p.m. And yeah. just to be clear, this is not necessarily when people are watching your channel. This is when they're watching videos on YouTube. So what do you think people should do with this? Like what should Creator Insider schedule its uh, uploads closer to the dark purple or how do we interpret this? So we're a little reluctant to say whether or not uh, scheduling your uploads or more specifically the published times at the darker area really impacts long-term performance. Mm -hmm. We don't quite have the data confidence to say that. However, this can help you engage with your community. So you can schedule a post at this time. You can uh, try to engage with comments or mm -hmm. uh, the community in other ways. You can do live streams at these times. That's where it's really effective is live streams and maybe something like stories or a lightweight format. It's possible that you could upload a Creator Insider video at six in the morning on Tuesday, Europe time. And that video over the long run may get just as many views, maybe more than if you uploaded it and scheduled it to go live at Tuesday at 6 p.m. Europe time. Because number one, the platform's job is to try and match audience with content. And so just because the video is a few hours old doesn't mean we stop trying. Mm -hmm. And I guess number two, there's also other people uploading. <laughs> uh, and if everybody uploaded at 6 p.m. Europe time, maybe that wouldn't be optimal. Right. So the thing is, we don't really know. It's very hard to get conclusive data on that. Mm -hmm. So we, but we do know it's useful for other fronts. We know it's useful for live streams and previews. Yes. So while we're not confident that it should really be tailoring your upload schedule to this or your publish schedule to this, uh, using it in other ways can help you build that rhythm with your audience. I love it. Yeah. And I guess the other thing is if you are promoting your content on other platforms that are more um, timely, let's say, you know, Twitter is an obvious example where it's, uh, it might be more important to, to kind of converge your efforts around the time when your audience is consuming content. So that's another thing to keep in mind. It's a, it's a hard problem to, to solve, but I'm, I think what we've never shown this level of um, data and so I think it does peel at least one layer of the onion. And uh, now as you were building this, 
were there things, Luke, where you were wondering like, oh, I wonder if the customer will prefer it this way or that way. Anything that you want to share and get uh, creator feedback on while we're, we're connected. Since this is very useful for things like live streams and premieres, one of the things that we've considered is if we should be uh, splitting this down by when are your viewers watching live streams? Because maybe mm. when they're on the bus or the train to work, and they're not necessarily watching a live stream, they're you know putting on music or putting on some light content that they're kind of in and out of. Mm. So there are different types of viewer engagements and maybe your channel's targeting one of them. Yeah, you could take that uh, further and say, what about when your viewers are watching videos from channels that are similar to yours? Yeah, so one of the reasons we're not putting down just when viewers are watching your channel is it's so heavily biased right. by your own publish schedule. Yes. It basically becomes a heat map of when do you publish during the week? Right, right. And that's not terribly actionable, but it could be interesting to say when are viewers likely to watch your content? Very cool, Luke. Well, thank you for sharing, man. If you like this report, if you want to see it soon, let us know in the comments. Give this video a like. Yes, we love your feedback. All right. Thank you, insiders. We'll see you next time. Keep it real. Keep it real, insiders. <laughs> I love it.